Yo, what is good, high performers? Welcome to another episode of the Can't Believe I Made It podcast. I am your high performance mentor and podcast host, Des. All right, so for today's Mentorship Monday, if you have not caught the last couple episodes, I thought it was super imperative because this last week with our Mentorship Monday, we went through the emotional cycles of change. And we went through what most people really struggle with when they get to a point where they're going to quit on themselves is that region of valley of despair. And what happens in most cases is that if you're able to get to a point where you're learning skills, you build yourself a community, you build yourself not only just accountability from others or external accountability, but also internal accountability. That's where that intrinsic motivation, that's where that intrinsic really love for yourself really takes a stand and says, no, I'm going to push through, I'm going to get resourceful, and I'm going to be able to, to be successful in whatever insert habit or whatever insert routine or whatever insert part of my hero's journey, right? So if you have not caught that, make sure that you go back to the episode 62, I believe, uh, to make sure that you get the full episode. In episode 63, I just did a check-in. You know, We went live in our High Performers Club Facebook group. I haven't done that in, in a while, and I just wanted to say what up and talking about things that I'm excited about, really checking in with things that uh, that I'm not only a part of, but also checking in with people in the group. And so if you haven't had a chance, make sure that you go back there. Okay, big thing that I wanted to tackle today, you know, we've done a really phenomenal job each and every week with these Mentorship Monday episodes, discussing ways, not only for you to habit stack, but ways for you to understand what mental conditioning has to do with your ability to remain consistent with any sort of habit that you're trying to engage in. The pod before that, we tried to talk about identity-based habits, and this is why this is really important. And so for me, what I really wanted to tackle today is three journals that change my life, my belief system about myself, and my productivity. And so I'm going to take you through a little bit more of these three journals, reasons why I think they are absolute game changers, and a huge reason why anytime that I'm working with a new high performer, I'm talking about these journals. I'm talking about ways for them to create some consistency within themselves so that they can start to develop a routine that really speaks to them. And here's the thing. If there's this like big thing in your life that you are um, experiencing some self-doubt or some imposter syndrome or like that fight or flight, right? Our nervous system really wants to guard us in so many ways. And so that fight or flight response or freeze response oftentimes means that we just stay stuck and we don't really do anything about it. And so these three journals right here were, were things that were so, so incredibly imperative because it, it helped me to dial back on the importance of not only my routines, but also how I spend my time and who I spend my time with. And that's where I think people are able to change because they understand what it takes in order to get to that next level. And so if you are someone who is stuck, I feel like these three journals might be something for you uh, to, to go out Amazon and to go in and, and bring in. Okay. So uh, if you're not going to watch this on YouTube, I'm going to try to do my best as always to explain some of it. But if you want visuals, because I myself am a visual learner, which is why I use tools that, that create visuals, uh, make sure you spend some time. If you're not following us right now on IG, uh, at I Made It Pod, you'll be able to see all of these episodes, uh, the videos, and then on our YouTube channel. All of this stuff is is always uh, in the show notes of of almost every episode. So make sure you spend the time to do that, so that you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. All right, so let's go ahead and break them down. So the first one that I really would, oh my gosh, it's such a huge game changer for me because. I always have a soft spot for it because it, it's where I started with in my journey from the standpoint of creating different messages and different neural pathways. So the first journal that I want to talk about, and I've said it so many times before, is the five minute journal. So this is from Intelligent Design. We'll make sure I put all of any of this stuff that we're going to talk about links and whatnot in the show notes just so that you can access it. And, and here's the other th here's the other caveat to this, too. I'm not saying in this moment that you need to buy all three journals. What I'm saying is. If there's something in here that resonates with you, if there's something in here that you're like, you know what, that sounds kind of interesting, go with that. Any one of these pods, my expectation of you is to not jot it all down and, and to go execute all of it, but to take one or two things that really stick with you and to create positivity and routines and accountability and, and a new identity behind trying to execute that and then getting information back when you quote unquote fail. I always like to think of failure as failing forward, and it's no different when it comes to this as well. So going back to the five-minute journal, you know, the the practice of gratitude is, is I always tell people, like, it's science. It's helping you to create different neural pathways because how many of us, 
right now, uh, spend a lot of time in all the things that went wrong or all the things that you are currently doing wrong. Well, there's the thing to this and it's, it's scientific. It's been proven from the standpoint of when we look at not only just your intellect, but also your neural pathways and your nervous system. And, and it's really just how you create your world. If you're able to, to be more cognizant of things that are going correctly, uh, things that you are really grateful for, if you're able to sit in some of that, you are by default creating new stories, creating new neural pathways, and therefore creating a new environment for yourself. Okay. And so the, one of the things that I really love about the five minute journal and what intelligent design did with this journal is that when the first 10 pages, they walk you through the science of why this works. They walk you through why other high performing people are doing this one, this one thing, and they have the science to back it. And the thing that I really love about it is it provides you with, with things that you can start to write in. So each and every day starts with some sort of inspiring quote, and I don't know about you, but to me, when others pass along knowledge, it really means a lot to me because they took the time and the thought to be able to provide that value. And because success leaves clues, these are some of the clues that we can look at. All right. So it'll take you a mixture through uh, a really thought provoking quote, or it might take you through a challenge. So something like, hey, how about no screens uh, during these times? Like, here's a challenge for you to try to see if we can boost your productivity. So each and every day, what it's walking you through, it's going to ask you, uh, I am grateful for, right? So you're going to jot down three things. And I think at first, what most people get into the mix of doing is they just kind of like go through the motions. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful that I have food on my plate. I'm grateful for the roof over my head. And here's the thing. That's not to say that those aren't like three great gratitude practices, but you're not really feeling it if you're going through the motions, Right. We talked a little bit uh, a couple episodes about identity based habits, becoming a person who does X, Y and Z. It's kind of the same thing here. So the objective for you is to sit with with whatever you feel grateful for, to sit in the feelings behind that. Right. And, and currently, as you're watching this right now, I'm actually uh, at my mom's house. I'm recording at my mom's house. For some reason, we've been kind of like missing each other, like in, in weird ways. So I haven't seen her. For, for almost a month, which is really uh, weird because I used to spend every weekend with her regardless of where she lived. And for me, like being here, it feels really good. It feels really homey. I feel a great amount of love of just being in her presence. And so what that might look like is is kind of me sitting sitting down, being really present in all the things that I appreciate, appreciate about my mom, all the things, uh, all the feelings that come up. And so like just doing that intentional work is creating opportunities for you to get out of that sympathetic nervous system response, which is that fight, flight, or freeze, which most of us in a very stress-induced society are staying. And it, it allows you to get into the parasympathetic where you are calming the nervous system, you are focusing on the breath, and you're just feeling the feeling. The next thing that the, the next part that you're going to be writing down is uh, what would make today great? And so this goes beyond goals. This goes back again, back to identity, like it would feel great. Or I am someone who is able to get out a, uh, a 15 minute walk today, right? I'm going to go take a walking meeting today. That's, that's what would feel great to me. And so the next part is going to be daily affirmations. So it's going to be an I am statement. And again, the I am statement is an invitation for you to, to go back to creating that, that new identity. So that identity based habit. All right. And then below what it's going to do, and it has a certain shade. And if you're going to, obviously you're going to be able to see this visual, but below it has the nighttime, right? And so what it's asking you to do is to focus in on three things that happened today that, that were really uplifting or three amazing things that happened. Because what that does is it, is it continues to create different neural pathways on, Hey, depending on whatever day it was, these are the things that I felt great about, or these are the things that I felt progressive about. And then the last question is going to be, how could you have made today better? And so that in itself offers you an opportunity to say, you know what? I, I did not plan my meals, so I ate out a lot, right? Or uh, I did not plan for my exercise. I told myself that I would exercise when I got home from work, but damn it, I was too tired. So maybe I might switch it up tomorrow and get my walk in or get my exercise in before work or maybe at lunch or something like that. So this this journal right here was honestly the start to me just expanding on my productivity and my own belief systems about myself. So I feel like the five minute journal is such a great first step for anyone, but it doesn't have to be your first step. It's just something that I think everyone should do. And, and all of my clients end up doing it. All right, next one. 
Um, so this is from JLD. Uh, man, the Mastery Journal was was so cool. Um, so the, the the whole premise of it is uh, it's going to take you into a hundred day focus into creating not only momentum but being really specific about what you're working on day to day. And what it has you do is it'll break it out in 10 different days. And then on day 10, you're going to rate your execution of what you're able to accomplish. And what's really great, and this is like as someone who has thought his whole life that ADHD was a really bad thing, I had multiple teachers tell me that my parents needed to do something about it. And and I remember thinking to myself like, gosh, this is this is such a horrible thing to have. And now as an adult, I'm like, oh my God, like this is a superpower. Having ADHD is a superpower because what it's allowed me to do, and this is part of, again, this goes back to belief system. This is why I think these three journals are game changers. Um, and thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, like this is a superpower. I just needed to learn how to operate with, with how I operate, um, not only strategically, but successfully. So the mastery journal was really cool in that way. And let me kind of break down why, why I feel like this is such a, a great tool. Not only does it have you break up what you need to break up in sessions, but what it's helping you to do is, is not only to, to take you away from multitasking, but to help you with you know one big thing that you need to do and then breaking them up into sessions. So each session is, is up to you. Usually what, what he tries to recommend is you're going to take a 45-minute session with a, a 15-minute break, or you can, even if it's just a 25-minute session with a 10-minute break, but that, that session in itself is meant to be just for that item. Okay. And what it does there is it tries to help you to expand on what the, the main goal is for that session. So for someone who is, uh, let's say creating a business for themselves and I mean, <laughs> oh man, I, I love it. You know, my, my, my wife is, is going through the process of creating her own business right now. And, and she's looking at license and, uh, malpractice insurance and she's doing all that. And so this is a prime example of what that might look like, where it's like, for the next 45 minutes, I'm going to focus in on this job at, or this uh, business application. The next session, I'm going to go ahead and take my break, get my water, use the bathroom, whatever I need to do. This next session that I'm going to focus in on is I'm going to uh, make some phone calls and make sure that I filled out the uh, the application correctly. And so the really cool thing about that is it, is it almost helps you to, to get into the mindset of reverse engineering really big things that you were trying to accomplish. But I don't even think that right there is the biggest part of this because this right here is solely responsible for me creating my morning routine. Because what it's going to have you do in the beginning, it's going to have you start jotting down things that you want to do. And it, start, it, it helps you to start thinking about like, what are some menial tasks that I can get done that's going to feel good with me checking off? And so some examples that he has here is like, first thing in the morning before I get started with any of my work, uh, I'm going to hydrate. Uh, he has an example of like, I'm going to go on a four mile run. I'm going to do the seven minute workout. Like JLD is, is super, you know, he, he's a high performer. <laughs> like he, He's a high performance person. Okay. What I started with was like, okay, I'm going to hydrate. I'm going to have my cup of coffee. I'm going to start with my 10 minute, 10 minute meditation. So I've focused in on three things. What was really helpful for me throughout this process is I got to check back on like, okay, I'm trying to do too many things with this morning routine. Let me try to dial it down. So even if it's just let me hydrate and let me drink my coffee, checking those off, like you, you get some sort of like feel good feeling and then you get to provide some momentum from there. So there's just so much about this journal that I really, really loved. I only ran through it once because I felt like I got what I needed. And if you've been following this pod as, as long as I hope that you have, you already know that in order to create a new habit it takes usually 60 to 90 days. And even, and even then, like there's going to be some failure. So you're just trying to like find what you need and what you love about what you're doing with this journal. I think I only got into day 60 before I was like, you know what? I'm in a really good routine. I know what I need to do. Like, let me just go ahead and continue. And that's kind of what built me into our third one, which is going to be the Evo Evo journal. Um, I, I think they trademarked it. I don't really know who the author is. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that. But the Evo Journal was was super great because it offers you, for me, like I love Myers-Briggs. Oh my God, like my, my wife and I were talking about um, identity and different 
types of uh, personality traits last night. And we ended up like falling to bed uh, really, really late because both of us just get really geeked out about personality types and what makes people tick. But the Evo Journal was something that was really cool because like for me, like I'm an ENFP, right? In my Myers-Briggs. And so what this did is it provided you with the brain assessment based off of what would help you to interact with the world better from the standpoint of not only just your habits, but also your productivity. And so it breaks it down into four different personality types. So you have the explorer, the alchemist, the architect, and the oracle. For me, I'm personally, I, I was the alchemist. And so I actually, um, oh my gosh, before this even started, uh, on Kickstarter, I ended up investing in it and was like, all right, like I'll, I'll, sh I'll throw you a couple hundred bucks. Like this seems really cool. And I ended up getting a, a year's worth. So I used this journal actually for a year. And what was great is it helps you. And, and there's an app that's attached to it. It helps you to go through and it's kind of the same thing. So regardless of your personality type, you're going to go through a gratitude practice. You're going to go through um, how, you know, for me, like as an extrovert and someone who really gets energy from others, one of the things that it prompted you to do each and every day was be like, Hey, how are you going to share your message with the world today? And for me, that was at first creating content, which was so, so cool for me to kind of think about it in that way versus just like another thing to do. And it kind of coaches you through things that you can start to do that are going to help creativity. And then each and every day you're checking in with like different aspects, like, Hey, what health goals do you have this week? Uh, what do you want to do on the, from the standpoint of love and relationships? What about contribution? So there's just like so much that I really, really loved about it. That was so cool. And when I look at creating different belief systems and a lot of you as listeners and a lot of you as, as, you know, past, you know, possibly future clients, right? It's, it's helping you to understand that you have a belief system. Right now, as we're speaking, you have a belief system and it might be serving you and it also might be hurting you. So the whole point behind this is to know thyself. I've said it on this podcast before and I'll say it again. Henry, Henry David Thoreau, wherever you go, there you are, right? All of this work in becoming a high performer who remains emotionally agile, who remains heavily connected to their most important relationships, who takes risks, who's able to overcome imposter syndrome, who's able to, to really dive in on their habits and their routines and to love themselves enough to be imperfect. That's what being a high performing human looks like. And then everything else falls in place. And so with these books, this is just an opportunity for you to do that. As always, to end this podcast, we always like to do some homework. So what I would like for you to do right now is to go ahead and screenshot um, one of the journals and just go ahead and tag us at I made a pod or at Desi Abeta and let me know which one you want to try. Uh, again, we love the engagement. We love for you all to be able to get value here. So um, these are the three journals that I felt like were absolute game changers for me and I hope they're game changers for you. All right, y'all. I'll see you on the next pod. Love y'all. Peace.